Okay, so this is the exterior portion of the home inspection video. I have not even gone inside the house yet. So I'm literally uploading this just so by the time you get it, I'll probably be done with the interior. So what's we're going to go around the entire property. First, I'll explain that I did not walk the roof. I used my drone. I hit 50 photos of it, and I got pretty damn close. So the roof is a 40-year dimensional roof. It's probably done about 10 years ago. Um, 10, 5, 10 years ago, I would imagine he caught about 30 years, 25 years left on it. The moss buildup, actually, we'll just talk about this first and I'll go around and talk about that. So we are probably originally concerned about the deck sloping. That was intentional. So this Trex up here was replaced the, replaced the original, most likely the TNG Trex that you see in the dock. So who did this, built this, did it intentionally by doing a 1 in 12 pitch. So you can see right here how it goes up and some of them are cut and it goes down above the, above the girder from the ledger board to the girder. If I saw a movement where it went down like that pitch intentionally and I saw that these were not notched, then I would see these columns twisting like this with fall with the, with the retaining wall. And you'd be seeing cracks too. So that is all intentional. That's fine. It's actually what he did. What they did was they most likely they put these. Yes, I, I see it right there. So um, either way, they installed new uh, joist members in between because Trex requires minimum 16 on center joist span, and the original was two foot. So. They didn't really think about that stuff when Trex first came out, which is like on the dock. That's the same Trex I have on my house. Um, so that probably was what happened. And then when it was TNG, well, they did a one in 12 pitch because otherwise you'll get puddling going into the side of your house. So that is all intentional having that pitch. Obviously it's well job, really good job on the flashing above the, above the uh, press treated joist members. Um, yeah, we're going to keep walking around here. Um, new panel box or fairly pretty new, um, 200 amp. Um, this is a Romex wire going to the outside. I mean, it's up to you what you want to do with that. Uh, I don't really call it a fire hazard. Oh, I just saw another hose bib. I'll have to get back to that. So the hot water heater is... It's it's older. Um, the, you gotta we gotta get replace the relief valve with a CPVC relief valve, which can handle 200 degrees Fahrenheit. This is Hardy Lap right here, which this obviously was not a. It must no, most likely. I have to look up the year of the house actually. Um, so the trim is also Hardy. It looks like. I have to look at it. Oh, that's weird. Okay, so, um, so we have a, sh ah, sorry, I'm just talking to myself. That's your shut off, <laughs> that's your shut off line for the uh, AC unit, which I still have to uh, inspect and write everything up about it. So, um, we'll keep going right over here. You, oh, let me go back over there. So you got some really cool drainage around here. Um, Everything is drained out to the go right to the lake. See these drain lines with there's proper fall going down and out. And then your drain line goes all the way out over here underneath this grass area. See it's all connected through. And then if you follow me, you see where it goes out right here. See? So you got excellent drainage around the property. We'll get to the dock in a second. I'm gonna keep going around the house. So this moss buildup you see up there, I was able to get my drone literally like right under there, all over the place. No, for this is the 812 pitch, and um, I wasn't too concerned, honestly. Um, it, what, you, what you have too is also you have a rafter cut and stack system on the inside of the house. So there's no trusses. So when I see stuff like this and this amount of cuts and angles, and usually that means it's a really good builder. So it's cut and stack roofing is not, you know, it's not something that can, anyone can do. Um, 
couple of good things too I want to point out. Uh, you got really good flashing above these windows, um, which is not really required. And it's just an extra precaution. And usually if I see that, I usually will see it on underneath um, gable end openings where there's not a whole lot of uh, coverage. I'm not going to bring my tablet up all the way up the driveway, but I have, I have took about 15 photos of the driveway. So a lot of stuff I see this where they do the flashing above the windows is because you don't really have a whole lot of overhang for water protrusion going through, which technically got two points of flashing above the ledger board or rim, I guess you can call it a skirt board that's tied to the uh, rim of the house. And then you got above this point, you got another um, flash point above that. So let's keep going around this way. Then we'll walk up front. Or actually, we'll probably do the dock first and walk around front. You can probably re-insulate that PVC line. Yeah, there's some corrosion right there. Again, it was intentional, like I said. Do you see, you see the girder right here? Let me point out, this is the girder. And you see how it's lined up perfectly with the ledger board. These are up higher. That's to give that intentional fall. So I think they did that just because it was um, either solid plywood or they had TNG treks like they do on the dock before and it's there's no opening so they didn't want to have puddling going to the house. Um, as you can see, these are perfectly straight. So there was no movement and that's kind of like what I, I would also would have saw movement or opening cracks in the mortar joints or whatever on the retaining wall as well. So, okay, we're going to go to the dock next. And then I'm going to go, okay, we should probably get these checked. I always recommend getting a septic inspection. It's not much money. Um, I would look at, the, I would definitely, see, this is the tricky thing. Do you need a, do you, you do probably need to continue that railing all the way down for safety, obviously. So this is about, I was talking about the TNG tracks. See how it's tongue and groove? So I will imagine they most likely have that on the house, which then they would want to have that pitch. See what I'm saying? So let's go down here and I'll explain a little bit of the dock, which I think it's actually in pretty good condition, honestly. Um, I have not really seen too much moisture damage. Oh, crap. To be too concerned about. Um, it is all pressure treated. Um, there's a little bit of movement there. But you still have a girder right there with steel columns going down. So there is some areas that can be tied like this, I would say this is not a recommendation of doing a um, attachment to girder to um, joist support. So I would say recommend obviously tying another piece from here to here to hold this joint right here where the girder meets the uh, two by. That'll be in the report. So you can see there is some move, there was movement, but I'm not, I don't expect it to fall down. A lot of times you, you don't even see steel columns going through the water. Mostly it's just wood. Like over there, it's wood. So obviously that's just a much better option to have than just dealing with, you know, wood going in the water. Because wood and water will always rot eventually. Um, even if they're, you know, pillars. Um, so again, this is the tricky situation because you probably... Because water level is so low, and usually you wouldn't need a safety rail, but I don't, I kind of have to say you need a safety rail going all the way across, like four inch balusters for safetyness. So, normally, if the water was at the normal water level, we wouldn't be having this issue. I had this on another house, so it's kind of like a I have to mark it up because of where the water level is, and it's lowest as record lows right now. So. I would recommend safety railing across, um, but that's all up to you if you want to do it. But usually, normally, you wouldn't be worried about that because the water level would be up here. So, um, 
even up here yeah so it's just it's kind of like if you have 30 inches of clearance to the level you don't need a safety railing see what i'm saying all right so that is it with the exterior portion of the home inspection video i'll be doing the interior now and i'll update more about the crawl space or it might is it actually is it, it might be just gonna slab i'm gonna guess so um like i said i haven't gone inside the house yet at all i like to do the video first and then i like to upload that while i'm doing the inside all right thank you